Hi, Amy with Fashion Tappings here, and I'm gonna catch you up on the um, our house update. I haven't done a vlog in almost a month, it seems like, and uh, we've got a lot done. I'm gonna show you real quick, because uh, you know the contractor and everybody's gonna be coming, so I'm gonna make this real quick. So I'm gonna start on the outside of the house, and then I'm just gonna move you through the house real quick so you can see the new con countertops and all the colors that I chose uh, and all the painting that has been done, and that's about it. So, okay, let's go. Okay, so we got the stone on. Gorgeous. Okay, this is stack, stack stone, flag staff. Or flagstone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The dark ceilings. Love it. It's gonna be kind of dark in here because we don't have electricity in here yet. It's wired, but it's not hooked up. Um, painting is, well, let me put it this way. Painting is almost done. My husband and I, my husband primed the entire house himself. Um, then we hired a painter to do the main floor, and then my husband and I were gonna do the top and then top floor in the basement. And then we did have the professionals come in and do the um, the trim. The people who did the main floor also did the trim throughout the house, but we're not 100% thrilled with their work. Well, not really 100% thrilled with them, period. But So this is Mindful Gray. I just went out of focus. I have all different kinds of beige grays going on. Um, Mindful Gray is a color. Got the staircase stained. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the painters. Granted, I know that you're gonna have some overshot, you know, when you're when you're staining. But like when we stained, my husband and I did the um, all the wood vanities, uh, the the countertops. You tape it off. You, you're you're careful. This this isn't careful. And I know, you know, they say, oh, we can paint over that. Problem is, is oil like that, like stain, is gonna bleed through eventually. Now they did come because they had it. I think I have some pictures. I'll insert pictures of just how messy they did put the stain on, the stain on. But it's already starting to, you know, bleed through the paint. Let me see if I can focus in. It's starting to bleed through the paint. The little stain, uh, stain, uh, stain spots. But they're all over the wall. I'll show you when we go upstairs. You'll see lots more. So, okay, this is what we got done so far. The entertainment center. Oh, I was had the doors open because just coming in for the morning and I primed the, um, the inside of the cabinets last night. So that is our, this is where we're gonna be putting the VCR, or VCRs, that shows how old I am. The Blu-ray players and the um, cable boxes and all that kind of stuff. So, and they, I put chicken wire inside the door. Instead of doing glass, and I hemmed it, basically. I just, it, uh, I just folded over, let me see if I can get focus in. The chicken wire, I just folded over the, sh the sharp part and then stapled it down so that it, nothing is sharp along here so that I'm not getting cut by the chicken wire. So I basically just kind of just said I hemmed it because all I did is folded it once towards the wood and stapled it. So. It's all folded to edges. That was really easy to do. Just use the staple gun for that. And so I put the chicken wire in. The wood countertops. Countertops are the same as our kitchen island, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we'll be having shelves up there. And the fireplace, it's just primed right now. I just primed it yesterday. Uh, the above the fireplace is actually utilizing um, the 
old it's actually using the old siding off the farmhouse. We took the old siding off the farmhouse, the original siding, and it was wood planked. And so we just sanded it down and we used that as the back of our fireplace. We were gonna paint over it and, but I mean, look at just how neat the distressing is of it. How many times they've repainted over this and we sanded it down and um, that's what, came out. I absolutely love it. Okay. So here's a, okay. So here's a better shot of it. I, I think it's going to look so nice, especially with the shelf when we get the shelves up on each side and then the dovetail, um, gray paint inside the coffered ceiling. We got that done. And the outside fireplace, they're going to be doing the stone work on the outside fireplace um, today. We're using the same stone that was on the outside of the house. That same stone will be put on the, the hearth and around the fireplace. So that's what we got done so far there. Here's my favorite of all, my kitchen island. This is, oh, that's my favorite. Now you'll see some like sanding marks and stuff. What I've done is um, the island's been is sanded down and then we put stain on it uh, and we used um, dark walnut. Then after that, I'm actually using a marine varnish, uh, which is the same thing you use on a boat to keep it waterproof. Uh, so we put a marine varnish on, put one layer of marine varnish, high gloss, and then sanded it. And I had to sand it because so much dust was coming through here that the dust, some of the dust actually got on the, um, the counter. And you have to sand between uh, applications anyway. So right here, like in here, that's just sanding. That'll, on my next coat of uh, marine varnish, it'll all be really glossy. So I'm actually, here I'll show you what I, I'm using. Okay, so to stain it, the color was, I have a bigger can of this someplace, but this is my sample. I use Minwax wood, uh, wood finish in dark walnut, um, 2716 is the color. And then here is what I'm using to, uh, as a marine varnish. It is Epiphanes, oops. And it's um, a clear varnish and it's a high gloss and it's for boats. Now this is not cheap, so we're only using that on areas that you know are gonna be touched by water. So we'll be using it on the island here. And then I also have a wood island in my laundry room. And I have one in the master bath, but I'm not gonna use the marine varnish in the master bath. I'm just using it in here and in the laundry room. So then we got the farmer's sink and we got a good deal on this. Um, always when you go to a showroom, ask if their floor models are for sale. We got this, um, it's got the apron on the front. You can't tell because everything's being protected right now. It's got the stainless steel apron front, 15 gauge, which the lower the number, the thicker the, the, the metal, because usually at Home Depot, a lot of those are like 18 gauge. Um, but we got this 15 gauge farmer sink for $350. And if you've been shopping sinks, you know that is a hell of a deal. Um, and it's just because we, they said um, this sink was a special order. And we said we didn't have time to do a special order. Could we buy, uh, could we buy the floor model? And they sold us the floor model and we got it 50% cheaper. So got that for 350 bucks. It's a pretty good deal. My faucets are getting installed today, hopefully. Then over here, um, we put wood posts. This is where the oven's going to be going. The oven's coming next Wednesday. Or actually, all the appliances are coming next Wednesday. Um, but we decided to anchor the stove by staining the little pillars there. And they match the island. So it kind of draws your eye back and forth. But I think they turned out really nice. I stained those two. My husband and I, we did this as a team. It takes two people to do this because... It drips and so you have to have one person uh, putting it on evenly back and forth throughout the entire island but then another person going behind you to see if you've missed 
or to catch your drips. So my husband are doing all, uh, we're doing all the finishing stuff like that ourselves. Now my marble arrived and it's, it's actually whiter than it looks on camera. For some reason it comes off more beige, um, but I love it. It's got the black and look at the stripes. It's got the black and brown stripes in the marble and that actually matches with the wood right there. So it kind of carries your eye through the other the rest, rest of the kitchen because of the brown being carried through with the black. Now I just love this marble. I, I mean, it was one of the first ones I saw and I, I just kept on going back to it. I couldn't find anything I liked better. So it's called Olympus. And then it's a quartzite marble blend. That's what I love about it because it's gonna be more sturdy. Um, as far as durability, as far as staining and scratching and that kind of stuff. Now this is going to be our white subway tile and we're going to use a, a warm gray um, grout. So that kind of ties back into the marble. And my pot filler. That's kind of boring. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll show you this in a minute. Now here, this is that vanity that I bought to go in the guest bath on the main floor, the powder bathroom. And um, I... I just love it. I love it. My contractor has made it uh, ready for plumbing. You just, he just he took this drawer and drilled out the holes for the plumbing. So this drawer won't be functional anymore. But you can see how glossy the top is. I don't know if it's dry yet. Oh yeah, it is dry. You see how glossy the top is? That is a semi-gloss marine varnish, also for boats. Uh, this needed to be waterproof because the sink here, people washing their hands. And a fun thing was is that um, there in this grain right here, there was a bunch of scratches because this I bought it at a consignment shop. And we couldn't get stain to stick. Stain would not hold to it. We sanded everything and then we got down to raw wood and the stain just would not adhere to the wood. So my contractor brought out a Sharpie. I mean, he's so clever. He brought out a black Sharpie and filled it in with the black Sharpie. And then I went over that, because I have to sand between coats. Uh, so when I sanded, it would, you know, take up some of the Sharpie. So then I used, uh, oh here, this is what we used. Use a wood finished pen. And it's in the color Providence. Just so happens, it's just something he had in his truck and it just happened to match, so we lucked out. So. We use this and <laughs> a Sharpie. Yeah, who knew? So we actually touched up the dresser with a Sharpie and uh, you can't even tell. I mean, would, would you think that there's, that was done with a Sharpie? But this high gloss, look at the gloss. You can see the reflection of the window. This is, I'll show you the product in just a second. That is a, another marine varnish. That is in a semi-gloss. I mean, that's how glossy my island is gonna be. I mean, that is really glossy. So did that, so it's ready. And so on top of this is where this sink, this, this sink comes in. We're gonna be putting this on the sink and let me try to find a hole so I can show you what it looks like. I can kind of, kind of show you here. It is it's so pretty. It's a glass bowl. It looks like a piece of pottery on the um, on the vanity. It looks like I just have a big bowl sitting on the vanity. It's not clear or anything. It's just oh, it's just so pretty. So that bowl is gonna be sitting on <clears throat> that vanity, and it's gonna be in the guest bathroom on the main floor. And then I have a, an antique. Uh, faucet, which you'll see when I get put in. That'll be that'll be going over the vessel sink. Now, laundry room is nothing new has been done in the garage. That's just the same old. Okay, laundry room. Uh, we have the floors down, and let me find a place where you can see the floors. I went to Floor and Decor and got these tiles. This they look pretty normal. Uh, they're 18 inch square tiles, so they're pretty big for 98 cents a square foot. I got them on clearance, I love them. And once again, wood countertops. I love wood countertops. I think they're so easy to take care of and they just look so pretty. And I just, I, 
I just can't get enough of them. I have them in one, two, three, four bathrooms. So there is my laundry room. I use butcher block in here. I loved it and I sanded it, stained it. Uh, this one, the stain is English chestnut. And so I stained it that. But I did um, water down the stain quite a bit. I use one part stain to two parts mineral um, uh, mineral spirits just to lighten it up a little bit because I didn't want a lot of color to it because it already has a lot going on with this texture. So I just used one part, um, excuse me, I had that backwards, uh, one part mineral spirits to two parts uh, stain, two parts early uh, or English chestnut. So hard to remember all that stuff. So there is the sink. And this is what I use. Here's one of the marine varnishes. It's, uh, it's made, made by uh, West Marine, which actually, if you see right there, that right there. Actually, if you see right here, that is the same company that makes the other stain I'm using in the kitchen. So it's basically the same thing, except for this one is a semi-gloss and the other one is a high gloss. So West Marine, and you can get it online, but that's what I'm using to waterproof all my wood countertops and I love it. It's easy to put on, it's a little spendy. Um, the high gloss stain that we're using in the kitchen is $68 a quart. And this one was a little bit cheaper, I think it was $44 a quart. But um, I love how the wood countertops are turning out. Okay, so what else has been done? Oh, I'll have to take you to my master bathroom. Okay, now the, the light in here is kind of changing the color of the room. The room is actually, you can kind of tell over here, it is called Oyster Bay. It is a green. Um, kind of a sage green and I, I'm really happy with the color and it's called Oyster Bay and it's uh, Sherwin Williams paint and then in the master bathroom I use the color called rain washed which is also a Sherwin, Sherwin Williams paint and my floors turned out nice I love it's porcelain tile but you can see they I mean it has all the details of, you can see the saw marks. I mean, they, they make it look like real wood. Even down to the like, little cracks and stuff. But those are 48 inch tile, and we got those at Floor and Decor, and I think, believe we only paid $3.29 a square foot, which is a really good price. Subway tile, that border, is coming off a different color in here on the camera than it is in person, but um, it'll tie together when I get the decor in here. But there's the floor, I love the floor. And the floor matches my paint on the wall. See, the greens. So we got the shower done, with the little bench in there, and then it'll have the glass wall, and then the glass wall on this side. And then right there is going to be the clawfoot tub. Okay, and then here is my countertops in here. Now this is a um, dark walnut. And I stained it, I didn't stain it, I had to stain it at all. It came this color. Uh, right now, I've treated it, I sanded it with a 220 grit sandpaper. And then I put a layer of sealer on it. And the kind of sealer I'm using, you can see my mess, I never put anything away. I leave everything sit down. Uh, dries by contractor nuts. Okay, it's Water Lux Originals. And it's this, um, see here. Premium wood finish, handmade from tongue oil. So it is a, um, a sealer finish. So I just applied that. I, I painted it on, made sure my strokes were nice and even. Back and forth, solid strokes. I um, applied it, waited eight hours until it was dry, sanded it again with the 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied the, um, the sealer again. 
And now today I'll be sanding it lightly again. <clears throat> and then I will be putting on, I have all my stuff in here. <laughs> I haven't bought knobs yet. Ugh. And then next I'll be applying this, which is the Waterlots Original Satin Finish. And this will give it the, um, it's made with tongue oil, which I don't know what tongue oil is, but it'll give it that gloss that will stay. And it'll fill in like, here's a little knot right here. It's a knot. It'll fill that kind of stuff in. So two layers of the sealer, sand in between. And then, oh, an important thing was is uh, I took a like a t-shirt cloth that you get at the paint store to wipe things down, but it doesn't truly get it completely clean. So you have to use a tack cloth, T-A-C-K. It's a tack cloth and it's a cloth. I have to wear rubber gloves when I'm using it because it, it feels like a cloth that's been soaked in oil or not oil, in glue. It's very sticky, but when you wipe across your cabinets, it takes up any bit of dust and res, uh, you know, lint, anything, that, even stuff you can't see. Because you can tell when you wiped with it, you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize it was dirty, but I'm so glad that I used this thing. Um, so you, after you sand, you wipe it down with a cloth, and then you take a tack cloth over it before you put your next coat on. So I'm loving how those turned out as well. And I know some of you will probably comment, you know, that you wish I would have showed you the process, but so far today is the only day, let me flip this around. <clears throat> so far today is the only day, one, I'm fighting a cold because I think it's probably just from being um, tired. But uh, today's the only day I haven't had a house full of people here. I, yesterday I didn't have people here either. I did videotape a vlog, but I used my cell phone and I had my cell phone facing the wrong way. So the whole video is a long skinny strip. So I'm re-videotaping today for you. Um, but usually there's a house full of people, they play their radios, and if I set my equipment down, it's gonna get broken. So I did not want my equipment up here. And it's, it's like 97 degrees outside, which means inside, uh, there's no air conditioning in here. It's like 110. And so every day being up here eight hours, you're sweating all day. And so for me to have my equipment up here, I just will not put my equipment through that. So I'm videotaping now and I'm taking it right back down to, to the farmhouse. So that's what we got done so far. I'll show you some of the other colors real quick. Okay, this, going upstairs, I'll show you the colors we picked. And I'm gonna show you, look at this, stain, look at that, look at that. stain. Oh, and here's the thing about the painters. Right there, and then like, I mean, how did you get it down there? I mean, the railing's up there. The painters um, up and left the day before yesterday, um, they left the day before yesterday, and the last thing they said was, we'll be back after your floors are in. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's not gonna happen. I'm, you know, I'm fine with, I know the process is when the floors have been installed that a chair rail will go in and then painters will come back and they'll do some touching up because putting in the chair rail and putting in the carpet does scuff up the trim. Does scuff up the trim, but um, I mean, they have paint everywhere. I mean, we have dripping doors. Some doors have like drip marks from the spray painting from the spray, um, the, you know, paint sprayer. Some of them have drip marks. They have to, and some of them they've sanded, and then they left it that way. So the doors need to be repainted. Um, there's a lot of spots in the walls that need to re be repainted, and they think they're gonna come back and do all the work when my, when my, when my new floors are in. And I'm not having it, I am so irate about that, but I'm not even gonna go any more into that, because I'm in a good mood right now, and I don't wanna ruin it. <laughs> so let me show you the colors we picked. Okay, this is my son, my youngest son's room. This is called Morning Fog. It's a Sherwin-Williams paint. It's a gray, I really like it. And it's a true gray. It doesn't have any beige tones to it or blue tones where it pulls a blue. It just comes off as a nice, clean gray. And it's called Morning Fog from Sherwin-Williams. And then in his 
bonus room, my son's bonus room, we use a color called Smoky Blue. And Smoky Blue is also, all my paints, I only buy my paints at Sherwin-Williams. And so it's a Smoky Blue, and I love the contrast with the white. So I, I really do. I love how the blues are turning out. My oldest son did blues in his bedroom too, but they're a different kind of blue. In his closet, I just reused um, some leftover repose gray that we, or no, um, we used leftover gossamer veil that we had left over. No one sees the inside of closets, so that's where we use the leftover paint. <laughs> okay, and then my son's bathroom. It's too dark to really show you anything in here. It's like a travertine tile with just glass border, but since it's so dark, it's gonna be hard to focus. You'll be able to see it in the Jack and Jill bathroom. Okay, okay so I'll just go ahead and take you to the Jack and Jill bathroom, my husband's office. Now I did all of the office, the guest bedroom, and my sewing room all in this color, and it's called Gossamer Veil. And it is um, through Sherwin-Williams. And I'll show you the name of it. There we go. Gossamer Veil. <clears throat> and I love the color because it's so versatile. In the light, it's actually not far off from like, you know, like just a antique white or linen but I like the fact that when, it's in, when there is no sunlight coming in the room, it actually has a true khaki color, like tan khaki. I really like it, so it's a very safe color to use. Now, the, uh, here's the vanities that we got for the Jack and Jill bathroom, and also my son, my youngest son's bedroom bathroom I just showed you that I couldn't focus on. And the floors will match when everything's dusted because there's a lot of dark, glazing on these cabinets and um and that's why i went with the darker the darker floors and it kind of matches with the floors that are going to be in downstairs so um i got this tie or uh, this granite and it's i got such a good deal on this it, it's so pretty i just love it it is an exotic and um the nice thing is is that i shopped their the granite store i shopped their boneyard first and the boneyard is basically um, the boneyard is basically leftover scraps from um, other granite projects. And I found three slabs large enough to do the Jack and Jill bathroom and my son's bathroom in the exotic. But I bought it at the boneyard. Here's the shower. Okay. Glass tiles. And we put niches in each one. I don't know if you say niche or niche. It's kind of like tomato, tomato. I'm almost out of battery already. Jeez. And then here's the other vanity. But like I said, we shopped it at the Boneyard. So um, we got exotic granite at level one granite prices. So I'm excited about that. Okay. Guest bedroom. Same color. Nothing new there. Okay. And then my sewing room. I did also the Gossamer Veil. And then these are the old kitchen cabinets I got at the garage sale. I got the doors out in the garage because I'm painting them. These will be painted white. So it'll be kind of blended in, and I'm using them for storage. Um, our contractor kind of piece, piecemealed everything together. That is a microwave stand turned upside down, and they just upside down, the, or turn the, um, the doors upside down, and got creative. Those will be shelves in there, and then I'm painting all of it white. So. Yeah? Oh. Okay, so my contractor came in, so I had to cut it short. So I wanted to show you real quick just the colors I chose for my son's bedroom in the basement. You can kind of see it straight ahead. I did the stairs. Now, the reason only some of the stairs are stained is because carpet will be coming down straight, and then you see how my stairs get wider here. The carpet's gonna come straight down, and then you'll see the wood on each side of the carpet. So that's why it looks like that. 
So my son, my oldest son's bedroom, we picked a color called bracing blue and it's hard to focus, I guess, but the bracing blue is actually, it looks like it's denim jeans. I mean, I love the color. And then since his bedroom, he likes a dark bedroom, uh, no windows. We went with the lighter blue and it's called elation. It's also a, Sher a Sherwin Williams paint and it's number is 6241 is the elation. And bracing blue is 6242. But you can see the difference right here. I have a, re it's a recessed wall right here. So I went with the lighter color, the elation. And then the darker color is the bracing blue. So there's a little two tone to his bedroom and media room. So bedroom is the elation, that is elation. And then this is bracing, or yes, bracing blue. But since there's no furniture, it's gonna be hard to keep a focus in here. So we got all the paint done. So we got all the paint done and that's pretty much it. We spent all of our time getting moved into the farmhouse. We are moved in there. Puppies are loving it. Uh, it's a lot less stress uh, because now I'm here on site and I don't have to drive so far and keep driving back and forth. But it is hot in these houses, or uh, in this house. The other house has, the farmhouse has air conditioning, but the new construction, no air yet. So it's like 110 degrees in that house during the day. It is ridiculously hot. So I haven't been able to vlog a lot. And uh, I apologize for that. And I'm also having problems with my laptop, which I do all my video editing on, is saying I am out of memory. Um, it's a new laptop, it's only a year old. I don't have that many videos on it. Something is sucking up the memory and I can't figure out what. Uh, so I gotta take that into the Apple shop and put it in, you know, get it fixed. So, you know, videos are gonna be sporadic here for like the next month uh, when I can get into, you know, have the time to do a video, I'm gonna do one for you. If not, um, just know that I I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't forgotten about you. And sewing will be starting as soon as the house is finished, as I always say. Okay, well, and then I'll also, when stuff starts getting done, I'll do a video uh, listing all the, like the paint colors, the paint numbers, the, uh, the stain, uh, uh, stain brands that I used, and the different products that I used. And so I'll do a video that lists all of that as well. So this is Amy of Fashion Tappings. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.